Hello, I'm Tammy Freeman, editor of Medical Physics Web, and I'm here with Professor Freik Bateman to talk about developments in medical imaging. Freik is head of radiation detection and medical imaging at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. Thanks for joining us, Freik. Your research team's working on new imaging devices and reconstruction algorithms, particularly in the area of SPECT imaging. Can you explain how SPECT works? Uh, SPECT uh, stands for Single Photon Emission Computer Tomography. It's a biomedical imaging device. Um, it shows uh, molecules in the body that are administered to the patient, most times by an injection. These molecules are labeled uh, with, uh, with a gamma emitting isotope and using um, dedicated uh, cameras, so called gamma cameras, one can observe uh, the molecules in the body. And by taking many uh, gamma camera images uh, around the patient from different directions, um, uh, one is able from that data to reconstruct uh, cross sections of the body uh, representing the concentration of the molecules at specific sites. And um, that means that you know, for example, how many receptors there are in a specific area of the brain because the molecules go to these receptors or you can see how the heart is perfused or if the tissue in the heart is uh, viable and uh, the result of these scans can be very important for medical decisions. Can you describe your recent achievements in developing very high resolution SPEC systems? There are the achievements of the, of the team at TU Delft, also at MI Labs, the company that we started, and the University Medical Center in Utrecht. Uh, they are the key players and all together we developed a SPEC technology that has instead of one centimeter resolution, which is typical in the clinic, has 0.35 millimeter resolution in a living uh, mouse. And the mouse is very important for uh, uh, research um, and to uh, study uh, models of disease. Um, and so it's very important to see these tiny, tiny details. Uh, uh, and with these devices, we can also make movies of drug interaction. They're very fast devices. And the other thing is that they are stationary. They have no rotating parts that makes the systems extremely uh, reliable and I think that is very important. There was a lot needed to get there. Um, uh, a lot of physicist work like mathematical models, uh, very advanced image reconstruction methods and also we were able to develop user interfaces that are as, let's say, easy to use as an iPhone so that everybody can make an image, uh, even uh, without uh, a physicist helping. And uh, so that's, that's what we uh, 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 achieved uh, with regard to SPECT. And we have also developed concepts to apply this technology in the future uh, to the clinic. So to do high resolution clinical SPECT with uh, similar concepts. So five years ago, you founded this company, MI Labs, to commercialise molecular imaging for preclinical applications. How are things progressing on that front? Uh, it's going uh, very well. Um, we started out to, to deliver these systems uh, in the neighbourhood, <laughs> uh, universities close by, so that we were sure that with the limited people we started uh, this company that we could service the people. And there were a lot of these clients were uh, uh, and still are research collaborators and that's uh, a very nice uh, thing for me as a scientist to have a company that is a company of scientists for scientists. Um, so that's how it started and now we are at the stage that we deliver to top si uh, sites around the world like Kyoto University, Moscow State University, um, Duke University, Mayo Clinic, uh, University of British Columbia and all these famous universities, they now use our technology for their cancer research, brain research, diabetes research uh, and so on. So it's, it's really taking off now, uh, wh which is of course uh, great. So what are the challenges in developing imaging systems for small animal applications? There are many challenges um, to develop these systems. Um, you need uh, animal comfort, so you have to take care 
that the animal is in good circumstances uh, in, in the system, uh, under controlled circumstances. Um, the system acquires uh, uh, very uh, data with a, a, a huge information content and um, to utilize that fully you need a very advanced reconstruction software and what's important is that uh, the images are uh, artifact free and have a high resolution but it also gives you many challenges uh, uh, computation wise. Your company's latest product offering is the Vector, a combined pet spec imaging system. What are the benefits of this device versus standalone imaging systems? Yes, the, the Vector uh, stands for versatile emission computed tomography and it can do spec and pet simultaneously. Um, so that is an advantage uh, because you can do multi-isotope studies and extend them beyond spec only and also include PET isotopes. The other thing is that it's very cost effective because you can transform a SPECT device into a PET device by exchanging one collimator. It's a little bit more there what you have to do, image reconstruction wise and preparing the system for that. Nice thing is also if you have such a SPECT device today, you can later on upgrade it when there's a budget for that. Um, it space wise is nice because it doesn't use up any additional space and the uh, PET, the resolution uh, of uh, imaging PET molecules is extremely high, it's far below uh, one millimeter. So that are all very nice uh, properties uh, of, of this system and um, it's, uh, the, it has the same ease of use uh, as a, as a use-spec because you don't see that as a PET isotope, you just acquire it and when you finally open up your data, there's also a PET image there. And, and that, that is very neat. Um, uh, I think this w was the reason that we recently uh, received the Product Innovation Award uh, from uh, uh, Frost & Sullivan. Finally, how do you see your PET spec system progressing in the future? Do you have any plans to move from small animal imaging into human imaging? Yeah, there, there are two important developments. We will go on uh, increasing the performance of the preclinical devices. You have to see that this is just taking off. The, the clustered pinhole imaging technology that is used in the vector is brand new. And you have seen what happened with other pest, pet, small animal pet systems over the last 15 years. There have been, has been made a, a tremendous amount of progress and uh, this is just starting so I expect that we will have a much higher sensitivity uh, in the future of the of the vector devices and uh, about the clinic that's a question I get very very often um, I have predicted in a paper that we can do for cardiac imaging about uh, two to three times higher resolution than people do now with the same scanning time and um, the same dose. Um, and the uh, same applies uh, to brain imaging and um, organ specific imaging. Uh, on the other hand, you could say uh, if I would have the same image quality, could I work with less tracer? I think it's in many cases possible to work with 10 to 30 times less uh, radioactive material for these scans in the future. And another thing that will be possible for many um, uh, uh, clinical investigations is to not only acquire a static image, but also a fast dynamic information to it so that you can see uh, how the tracer gets in a, 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 in a tumor or in the heart. And, and that would give a lot of additional uh, information for free that's now completely hidden. Thanks very much, Frank. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.